Good morning. Today is the third video in our series of the ultimate guide to Etsy search. If you haven't already seen, I'll have links to the playlist up in the wee eye in the sky in the corner. If you click on that and you'll see the videos I've already had to date. This is following on from last Wednesday's Etsy announcement, Etsy article, the ultimate guide to the Etsy search, where I talked about my first impressions of this and some, some ideas of what they're saying, a little explanation of what they're saying. And I just want to cover in depth some of the things they're saying, explain them, show how to use them a little bit better, because I know people are freaking out, but this is an awesome guide. It's here to help us get our listings sorted out in time for Christmas. But before we get started, I will say a couple of do's and don'ts. First of all, most importantly, do not panic. This is not something that needs to panic panickers. It's something that's here to help us. So if we use this, it can give us better ideas how to do better in our shop. It's not saying last Wednesday suddenly everything changed. It's not saying so we don't need to change every single listing right now. That would be a really dumb thing to do. It would be pretty hard on us. We would burn out if we tried to do that. So work on making little changes at a time. See how these changes work out and see if you need to adjust what you're doing. But so the number one question I've been getting from this ultimate guide to the Etsy search is titles. How do we now make short titles? First of all, what am I talking about here? So in the ultimate guide to the Etsy search, in the page of how search works, we talk about the relevancy of using tags, titles and categories to match the shopper's query. So titles are still important. It says so here. But let's, let's have a little look where this short thing comes in. So on Keywords 101, Etsy is telling us keywords in your title can help match with your shopper's query, but it's just one factor. Focus on writing, and here's the important bit, short, clear, descriptive titles that make it easier for a shopper. We're looking for a shopper what they're reading, something that helps for them. A long list of keywords in your title may confuse buyers or turn them off their listings. So no keyword spam, no making your listing look like your shop is in Wish. It's a cheap knockoff shop. Now we are handcrafted vintage supplies. We're specialist shops. So let's behave like that. And they even give us an example here saying that something a little more difficult to understand might be person personalised wash bag, men's leather, wash bag, groomsman gift, add a monogram. <clears throat> Where, whereas a better title for humans would be monogrammed leather, wash bag, groomsman's gift. This is more understandable. And it tells us pretty much the same thing, but it's a nice... Nice, sensible, for a human title. And equally in the page, create listings that convert. We're also the listing titles. Your titles can play a role in getting shoppers to click on your listing. The title should make it easy for shoppers to quickly see what you're selling and what makes it unique. And remember, shoppers only see the first few words of your title. Remember, in search, Etsy cuts off all but the first few words of your title. So those first few words are super important. So what is your title? What is important about your title? So what it's telling us here, the title is super important because it helps the buyer. It makes people want to see our item. It makes people want to buy our item, it makes people understand, but also your title helps with the relevancy. It's your SEO, it's your metadata. This is also what we're telling Etsy we want our item to rank for. But what people have been, mis what, what's changed in the past couple of years 
is you're less relevant if you attempt to cover all your tags in your title. We want our title to be, this is the thing we're saying to Etsy, this is the important thing, this is the thing that I really, really want to rank for, or this is, I really want to tell you that this is what this item is, this is super important. Now, in these papers, Etsy is telling us that there's lots of factors in what they decide, what they what's going to be returned in search, where we're going to get ranked in search. An exact match of keywords do give us a boost, but there's other ranking factors that are super important too. And mostly that is your customer experience. So if you have listings that customers love, customers are more likely to click for, then you're more likely to rank higher in the rankings. But if you have a title that's just full of keyword spam, you're telling Etsy, I want to rank for this and this and this and this. So all your ranking power is split over several terms. So let's focus in on one term. It makes way more sense for the buyer. It makes more sense for Etsy. It says, this is what I think this item's about. Etsy will then give you a little boost in the rankings. Hopefully you'll get seen for that one term. And then it'll see if the buyers like this, if they click on your listing, if they love it, if they buy it, then Etsy will say, this is a good listing. We'll pick other terms that are in your tags. We'll pick other similar terms and we'll rank you for them as well. So if we focus in on one important thing, then that actually helps our relevancy as well. So, but what you're here for, how on earth are we going to shorten our titles from what we've had? So for listings that you already have, we'll talk about how to write new listings in another video, how to find your tags and keywords, but listings that you already have, you've already done all your SEO for them in the past. You've had to think about what you think are important terms. You've had a listing up. Now we have some stats on that. So you want to head over to your shop stats. And I'm looking at for 12 months because this gives us a lot of data. You can also compare for 30 days to see if something's dropping away or to see if a term's picking up and becoming important. But I'm gonna look at 12 months because I wanna see what was doing well at Christmas time and everything as well. So if you go into your stats, set it for 12 months and go into your listings and you get an idea of some of your good listings, some of your most visited listings. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose, now don't do them all at once, and also focus, a lot of the time you want to focus on your listings that are doing less well, but I'm going to pick on a listing that's doing kind of good because this has got a lot of positive interaction that Etsy's going to like, so if I make changes, I'll get to see any impact to the changes much quicker. So I'm only going to change one of these, but we're going to go with this little dog here because this is a terrible keyword stuffed title. What have I, what have I named this little guy? He's personalized dog, dog sculpture, needle felted dog, custom Havanese art, Tibetan, Tibetan terrier art, or any breed dog lover gift made to order. That sounds very much like I wrote that for a computer. There's a lot of information in there, hopefully. I, I was also trying to get customers to notice that this was a made-to-order, personalised sculpture, but people don't really read much. There's too much given there. It's really not the best title. But if we have a look, it, it's done fairly well. It's got a, f a fair number of visits and it's picking up some some orders. It's not my top listing, but it's a reasonable listing. So if you click on that, it takes us over to the shop stats. And if you scroll right down in your shop stats, you get the search terms that people are finding you with. Now, this is super important. If we're thinking of shortening our title, we're going to be taking out some of the terms from the title. So we want to make sure that we're only picking on the most important terms in the title so that we don't lose too much ranking. Hopefully we won't lose any ranking at all, but this is another thing. Make these changes and then come back to it in a couple of weeks and see 
what's happened. So take a note of where your shop is just now. Have a look at all the terms and everything. Note down what changes you've made and then see in a wee while if there's any difference. Give it at least two weeks to a month to see if there's any difference. So search terms here is telling us what customers searched for to find our listing. So we've got a whole load. Now, if I pop up here again, just for us to see it again, is the listing, the listing title. Now, what I am trying to tell Etsy here in a terrible type way is all the things I want to try and make it rank for. So I want to rank for a personalized dog, dog sculpture, needle felted dog, custom Havanese art, Tibetan terrier art, dog lover's gift, made to order. These are all tags I was trying to rank for. I've been through Etsy rank when I was setting up this listing, trying to find listings that, trying to find tags that seemed competitive enough that I could possibly rank for. And I, I aimed for all of these. Now this was ter this was pretty bad, but it worked. It worked at the time and it's given me some good views and it's given me some good stats. But let's have a look and see what's what's really no good here. So if we pop on, I was on page two there for some reason. Um, if we pop on to our page one and we can have a look at what actual listings have been getting the most views. So we're gonna think of these as these are the important keywords that we're thinking about how we're going to keep them in our title and still have a short title. So 94 views came from just the single word Havanese. So this is kind of important and 83 for needle felted dog. So I've got a couple of tags in the title already that are doing quite well. Also Tibetan Terrier. And then all the rest of these felt dogs, felted dogs, needle felt. These are all kind of all needle felted dogs. It's all the kind of same thing. So if I'm doing well for a needle felted dog, then Etsy's going to boost me up for all the rest of these as well. I'm not going to touch the tags in this. We're just changing the title. So all my tags will still be as relevant because felted dog is in there with needle felted dog. Felt dog, if I'm doing well for one, Etsy will... Etsy will help me out and let me do well, keep on doing well for those. So already we've found that there's there's some that are just not showing up at all. I'm just gonna click onto page two as well so we can get a real a real good look. But if we if we have a look in here, there is some titles, some tags that are absolutely no good already. I mean it's in a year these are down to only like seven views. So anything else is not important. So I'm not getting views for made to order. I'm not getting views for dog lovers gift. There isn't a search for any, for, for any breed. So to be super simple about this, I could just knock off those that the end of that title and say, I don't need all of that. So my title is personalized dog sculpture, needle felted dog, custom Havanese art, Tibetan terrier art. But that still doesn't sound very human, does it? That still sounds like it's written for a computer. I'm still trying to hit too many bases at once as well. So one thing I'm thinking immediately is Havanese and Tibetan Terrier are two different breeds of dog. They're similar kind of breeds of dog and they attract similar people, but I could split this. I could make two listings out of this. I can have one listing that's focusing in on the Havanese and another listing that's focusing in on Tibetan Terrier. And even if you don't have a custom listing, you can still do this with your listings if you're making listings, if you're making items that you can make more than one of, say you've got a card with two breeds of dog on it, you could look at this and say, oh, both are individually getting search terms. So I'm going to make a listing with a card that's got one of the dogs on it. I'm going to make a listing with a card that's got the other breed of dog on it. So it tells you these are things worth going for. 
So what I'm going to do here, what my thinking is, is I can split this into two. So we'll have one listing for Havanese and one listing for Tibetan Terrier. So just now, because Havanese was the biggest search term, this listing is going to be about a Havanese dog. We'll take out the Tibetan Terrier. And we certainly don't need to say the word art there either. So we've already whittled it down even more. Now, personalised and custom, again, they're the same thing. Now, if we look at where people are coming from, it is a bit split between personalised and custom. But if we add up all the custom and all the personalised, there's slightly more search for custom than they do search for personalised. So we'll take out the personalised. And again, in the Tibetan Terrier listing, I could call it personalised Tibetan Terrier something or other. So we still have this as a term that can be used in a different listing and it can still be used as tags but just now we're aiming for for the one thing. We don't need to say the same thing a couple of ways in this one listing. So what have we got left? Um, <clears throat> so dog sculpture is bringing in some views but that could be another listing. I mean it's only 11 so we don't particularly need or want dog sculpture necessarily like like that. However if we want to really explain to our customers then we could shunt sculpture onto the end there and custom onto the beginning. I want to include the word custom because this is clear to our customers when they see it. I don't want to just say needle felted Havanese dog because people wouldn't realise this is a custom listing. This is for me to make their own dog. So custom is an important word, custom or personalised. So we're going to say custom first so people know that this is being made especially for them. Needle felted dog is important. We could say custom needle felted dog sculpture if we wanted. Yeah, art is totally not showing up in the search, but sculpture is. So let's let's keep sculpture. Let's let's rub that out. Let's keep some of some of sculpture. I kind of like that as a as a word, and it's quite descriptive. Now, I know from when when I've done my SEO on this, needle felted dog is quite a competitive term. So I could say needle felted Havanese dog, but that is breaking up that term and making it less relevant. So at the minute in time, I want to keep this term totally relevant. So I'm going to say needle felted dog, keep that term altogether. So what I am thinking we could use for our title that is going to sound human but still has a few keywords in it is going to be custom needle felted dog so that explains exactly what this listing is it's a custom made just for you it's needle felted that's how it's created it's a dog so that's the first part of our title and then example Havanese or I could say example Havanese sculpture sculpture will probably get cut off but yeah, I think example Havanese sculpture, sculpture. So this is helping for people who are searching for their own specific breed of dog, which a lot of people do. If I just said needle felted dog sculpture, then that's missing out on people who are looking for a specific breed of dog. So custom needle felted dog, example Havanese sculpture or Havanese, yeah, Havanese sculpture. So there we go. We have a title that is explaining at a glance to a customer that this is a, this is a listing just for them. It's a custom thing made just for them. How it's made, it's made of a dog, it, it's of a dog. And here is an example, a Havanese sculpture. So there we go. We've gone from one massive title to a shortened title. So let's let's change that just now. So it goes from the full line here to
and there we have a much shorter title that explains exactly what it is. It still has a number of keywords. It still still has a whole bunch of keywords. Actually, we have needle felted dog, custom dog, custom felted dog, custom Havanese dog. All these are still tags. All these are still queries that Etsy will list us for, but we've shortened down from this massive bunch of spam, let's clear it, from this massive bunch of spam words, we now have a short, concise title that is focused in on the most important keywords that I've taken from my stats. So I hope this helped explain kind of what we're doing here, how you can use your stats to find the best keywords that you want to rank for that is going to make the most sense to a customer and it's going to make the most sense to a computer. So thank you so much for joining me. If you have any qu questions about this ultimate guide to Etsy SEO, then leave them in the comments below. Uh, Friday, I will be talking about the octopus gate. I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about there. Um, but thank you so much for joining me. I'm Pam Duffy. I'm here to help you craft your career with creative marketing and artistic inspiration. And right now I'm trying to help us all sort out this ultimate guide to Etsy SEO. Thank you so much and see you later.